The Battle of Ghazala near the modern town of Ain al-Ghazala was fought during the Western Desert Campaign of the Second World War, west of the port of Tobruk in Libya, from 26 May to 21 June 1942. Axis troops of the Panzerarmee Afrika General Oberst Erwin Rommel consisted of German and Italian units. Allied forces Commander-in-Chief Middle East, General Sir Claude Ochinlek were mainly British, Indian, South African and Free French. Rommel secretly had the advantage of detailed advance intelligence of the Allies, resulting from an unwitting breach of communications security by Bonner Fellers, a military attaché at the U.S. Embassy in Cairo. Secret data on British strengths, positions, losses, reinforcements, supply, situation, plans, morale etc." was read by German signals intelligence in Africa, within eight hours of their transmission to Washington. This calamitous situation endured from December 1941 until 29 June 1942 after the fall of Tobruk, when the U.S. Black Code was replaced, the Axis distracted the British with a decoy attack in the north and made the main attack round the southern flank of the Ghazala position. The advance succeeded, but the defence of the French garrison of Bir Hakim, at the southern end of the line, left the Axis with a long and vulnerable supply route around the Ghazala line. Rommel retired to the cauldron, a defensive position backing onto British minefields, forming a base in the midst of the British defences and Italian engineers lifted mines from the west side of the minefields to create a supply route through to the Axis side. The 8th Army counterattack, Operation Aberdeen, was poorly coordinated and defeated in detail, many tanks were lost and the Axis were able to regain the initiative. The British withdrew from the Gazala line and the Axis troops overran Tobruk in a day. Rommel exploited the success by pursuing the British into Egypt, denying them time to recover from the defeat. As both sides neared exhaustion, the 8th Army managed to check the Axis advance at the First Battle of El Alamein. The battle is considered the greatest victory of Rommel's career, but Operation Hercules, a plan to attack Malta, was postponed to concentrate on the pursuit. The British managed to supply Malta and revived it as a base for attacks on Axis convoys to Libya, greatly complicating Axis supply difficulties at El Alamein. Topic: Background. Topic: Benghazi recaptured. Following Operation Crusader, in late 1941, the British Eighth Army had relieved Tobruk and driven the Axis forces from Cyrenaica to El Aghela. The Eighth Army advance of 800 kilometers (500 miles) overstretched its means of supply, and in January 1942, the British reduced the front line garrison to work on lines of communication and supply dumps, preparatory to another westwards advance against Tripolitania. The elimination of Force K from Malta, which ran into an Italian minefield off Tripoli in mid-December and the arrival of Fliegerkorps II in Sicily, neutralized Allied air and naval forces in Malta, allowing more Axis supplies reaching Libya. After a two-month delay, German and Italian forces in Libya began to receive supplies and reinforcements in men and tanks, which continued until the end of May, when Fliegerkorps II was transferred to the Russian front. While aware from signals intelligence of these reinforcements, GHQ in Cairo underestimated their significance and Axis fighting strength, having greatly exaggerated the casualties inflicted on the Axis during Operation Crusader. In an appreciation made in January 1942, Ochinlek alluded to an Axis fighting strength of 35,000 men, when the true figure was about 80,000 50,000 German and 30,000 Italian troops. The Eighth Army expected to be ready by February and GHQ Cairo believed that the Axis would be too weak and disorganized to mount a counter-offensive in the meantime. On 21 January, Rommel sent out three strong armored columns to make a tactical reconnaissance. Finding only the thinnest of screens, Rommel changed his reconnaissance into an offensive, recaptured Benghazi on 28 January and Timimi on 3 February. By 6 February, the British had fallen back to a line from Ghazala to Bir Hakim, a few miles west of Tobruk, from which the Italo-Germans had retired seven weeks before. The British had 1,309 casualties from 21 January, lost 42 tanks knocked out, another 30 through damage and breakdowns and 40 field guns. Ghazala Line Between Ghazala and Timimi, just west of Tobruk, the 8th Army was able to concentrate its forces sufficiently to turn and fight. 
By 4 February, the Axis advance had been halted and the front line had been stabilized, from Ghazala on the coast 48 km 30 miles west of Tobruk, to an old Ottoman fortress at Bir Hakim 80 km 50 miles inland to the south. The Ghazala line was a series of defensive boxes accommodating a brigade each, laid out across the desert behind minefields and wire, watched by regular patrols between the boxes. The Free French were to the south at the Bir Hakim box, 21 km 13 miles south of the 150th Infantry Brigade box, which was 9.7 km 6 miles south of the 69th Infantry Brigade box. The line was not evenly manned, with a greater number of troops covering the coast road, leaving the south less protected but the line was behind deep minefields and a longer line would make an attack around the southern flank harder to supply. Behind the Ghazala line were defensive boxes known as Commonwealth Keep or Hill 209 at Ras El Madar on Tobruk's main defensive line, about 14.5 kilometres west-southwest of the port. Akroma, Knightsbridge, 19 km 12 miles south of Akroma and El Adem, sited to block tracks and junctions. A box at Retma was finished just before the Axis offensive, but work on boxes at point 171 6.4 km 4 miles southeast of Bir Hakim and Bir El Gubi did not begin until 25 May. Prelude Topic. British preparations Churchill pressed Ochinlek to attack to push the Axis out of Cyrenaica and relieve the pressure on Malta, which Churchill felt was essential to the war effort. Having particular regard to Malta, the loss of which would be a disaster of the first magnitude to the British Empire and probably fatal in the long run to the defence of the Nile Delta. The British received new equipment, including 167 Lend-Lease M3 Grant tanks equipped with 75mm guns, and large numbers of six-pounder anti-tank guns. Rommel thought that Allied minefields ended well north of Bir Hakim and did not know of the mine marsh surrounding the box. The Eighth Army was in the process of reorganizing, changing the relationship between infantry and artillery, while the RAF commander Arthur Tedder concentrated the efforts of the Desert Air Force on supporting the troops on the ground. Army commanders lost the power to direct air operations, which was reserved for the air commanders. A new fighter-bomber concept was developed and Air Vice Marshal Arthur Coningham, commander of the DOF, moved his headquarters to the 8th Army HQ to improve communication. Axis commanders knew that the entry of the United States into the war would give the 8th Army access to an increase in materiel, but sought to forestall an Allied offensive before these supplies could be brought to bear. By late May, on the Ghazala Line were the 1st South African Division nearest the coast, the 50th Northumbrian Infantry Division to the south and the 1st Free French Brigade furthest south at Bir Hakim. The 1st and 7th Armoured Divisions waited behind the main line as a mobile counterattack force, the 2nd South African Division formed a garrison at Tobruk and the 5th Indian Infantry Division which had arrived in April to relieve the 4th Indian Infantry Division was held in reserve. The British had 110,000 men, 843 tanks and 604 aircraft. Topic: <inaudible> Axis preparations. The Axis retreat to El Aghaila after Operation Crusader reduced the supply distance from Tripoli to 740 kilometers, 460 miles. The discovery of 13,000 tons, 13, long tons of fuel at Tripoli eased the supply crisis, despite the delivery of only 51,000 tons, 50, long tons of supplies in January. The Panzer Army had a much shorter supply line and the British were burdened by an overextended supply line. The arrival of Luftflotte II in Sicily had also regained air superiority for the Axis. Rommel asked for another 8,000 lorries but this unrealistic demand was rejected and Rommel was warned that an advance would cause another supply crisis. On 29 January, the Panzer Army recaptured Benghazi and next day ammunition supply to the front line failed. By 13 February, Rommel agreed to stop at Ghazala, 1,400 kilometers 900 miles from Tripoli, until May. Monthly deliveries averaged 61,000 tons, 60,000 long tons, less than the smaller Axis force received from June to October 1941 but sufficient for an offensive. 
The 1,400 km 900 miles advance to Ghazala succeeded because Benghazi was open, reducing the transport distance for about 33% of the supplies of the Panzer Army to 450 km 280 miles. The Italians tried to restrain Rommel by advocating the capture of Malta, which would postpone another offensive in Africa until the autumn but agreed to an attack on Tobruk for late May. An advance would stop at the Egyptian frontier, another 240 kilometers 150 miles east and the Luftwaffe would redeploy for Operation Hercules. The capture of Malta would not alter the constraints of port capacity and distance, protecting convoys and a large port close to the front, would still be necessary for a decisive victory. Air attacks directed by Kesselring against Malta greatly reduced its offensive capacity, allowing supply convoys from Italy to reach Axis forces in Africa with increased regularity. Unternehmen Venezia Operation Venice, the Axis plan of attack, was for armoured forces to make a flanking manoeuvre south of the fortified box at Bir Hakim. On the left flank, the Italian 132 Armoured Division Ariat would neutralise the Bir Hakim box and on the right flank, the 21st Panzer Division and 15th Panzer Division would advance north, behind the 8th Army defences, to destroy the British armour and cut off the infantry divisions on the Ghazala line. On the far right of the offensive, a battle group from the 90th Light Africa Division was to advance to El Adem, south of Tobruk, and cut the line of supply from the port to the Ghazala line while holding Allied troops at Tobruk. The rest of the Italian 20th Motorized Corps, the Italian 101st Motorized Division Trieste, would open a gap in the minefield north of the Bir Hakim box near the Sidi Mufta box, to create a supply route to the armour. Rommel anticipated that, having dealt with the British armour, he would capture El Adem, Ed Duda, Sidi Rez and Knightsbridge. The Axis tanks would then be in a position to attack on the following day west against the 8th Army defensive boxes between Ghazala and Alem Hamza, meeting the eastwards attack by the Italian 10th and 21st Corps. By late May, the Axis forces comprised 90,000 men, 560 tanks and 542 aircraft. Topic. Battle Topic. Operation Venice At 1400 on 26 May, the Italian 10th and 21st Corps, after a heavy artillery concentration, launched a frontal attack on the central Ghazala positions, beginning Unternmen Venezia Operation Venice. A few elements of the Africa and 20th Mobile Corps were attached to these assault groups. During the day, the bulk of the Africa Corps moved to give the impression that this was the main Axis assault. When darkness fell, the armoured formations turned south in a sweeping move around the southern end of the Ghazala line. In the early hours of 27 May, Rommel led the elements of Panzerarmee Africa, the Deutsches Afrika Korps Dock, Italian 20th Motorized Corps and the German 90th Light Africa Division, in a bold flanking move around the southern end of the Allied line, using the British minefields to protect the Axis flank and rear. The Ariat Division of 20th Motorized Corps was held up for about an hour by the 3rd Indian Motor Brigade of the 7th Armored Division, dug in about 6 kilometres southeast of Bir Hakim, which was then overrun with the loss of 440 men killed and wounded and about 1,000 prisoners, including Admiral Sir Walter Cowan and most of its equipment. The Italians lost 23 tanks, some of which were repairable on the field, 30 men killed and 50 wounded. The 21st Panzer Division was advancing south of the position and did not take part in the action. Further to the east, the 15th Panzer Division had engaged the 4th Armoured Brigade of the 7th Armoured Division, which had been ordered south to support the 3rd Indian and 7th Motorized Brigades. In a mutually costly engagement, the Germans were surprised by the range and power of the 75mm guns on the new M3 Grant tanks. The 4th Armoured Brigade then withdrew toward El Adem and spent the night near the Bellum supply base, east of El Adem. By late morning, the Axis armoured units had advanced more than 25 miles 40 km north but by noon had been stopped by the 1st Armoured Division in more mutually costly fighting. On the far right of the Axis advance, the 90th Light Africa Division engaged the 7th Motorised Brigade at Retma and forced it to withdraw eastwards on Bir El Gubi. Resuming their advance toward El Adem before noon, armoured cars of the 90th Light came upon the advanced HQ of 7th Armoured Division near Bir Bude, dispersing it and capturing a number of officers including the commander, Frank Maservi, who pretended to be a Batman and escaped. The inexcusable 
lapse in security, left the division without effective command for the next two days. As planned, 90th Light Division reached the El Adem area by mid-morning and captured a number of supply bases. The following day, the 4th Armored Brigade was sent to El Adem and the 90th Light Division was driven back to the southwest. The tank battle continued for three days, lacking possession of Bir Hakim. Rommel drew the Africa Corps into a defensive position, using the extensive Allied mine belts to block a British approach from the west. The British tanks attacked the position several times from the north and east and were met by accurate fire. The Axis supply situation became desperate, defending the German rear. The Ariat Division repulsed attacks by the British armoured brigades on 29 May and during the first week of June. Bir Hakim The Bir Hakim box was defended by the 1st Free French Brigade under Marie Pierre Koenig. On 27 May, an Italian tank battalion of the Ariat Division, which had not been engaged in the destruction of the 3rd Indian Brigade box and had continued to advance alone at full speed, stumbled in the French positions and launched a hasty attack, which was a costly failure against the French 75mm guns and mines. On the night of 1 half June, the 90th Light and Trieste divisions were sent south to renew the attack on Bir Hakim, where the battle continued for another 10 days. Our attacks repeatedly bogged down in the excellent French fortifications. During the first ten days of out sick attack against the French the British had remained amazingly calm. The Ariat division alone was attacked by them on 2 June but it defended itself stubbornly. After a counterattack by the 21st Panzer Division the situation there again became quiet. Reinforced with a further combat group, the Axis attacked Bir Hakim again on 9 June and overran the defences by the following day. Ritchie ordered the remaining troops to evacuate as best they could, under the cover of darkness. Under fire through the night, many of the French were able to find gaps in the line through which to withdraw. The survivors then made their way some 8 kilometers miles to the west, to rendezvous with transport from the 7th Motor Brigade. About 2,700 troops including 200 wounded of the original garrison of 3,600 escaped and about 500 French troops, many of whom were wounded, were captured when the 90th Light Division occupied the position on of June. The Cauldron Early on 29 May, supply vehicles supported by the Trieste and Ariat Divisions, worked through the minefield north of Bir Hakim and reached the Africa Corps. On 30 May, Rommel pulled the Africa Corps back westward against the edge of the minefields, creating a defensive position. A link was formed with elements of the Italian X Corps, which were clearing two routes through the minefields from the west. In the process, the Sidi Mufta box was overrun and the 150th Infantry Brigade destroyed. In the afternoon the 30th of May, I personally reconnoitered the possibilities for an attack on Ghat el Uwalib the Sidi Mufta box and detailed units of the Africa Corps, 90th Light Division and the Italian Trieste Division for an assault on the British positions next morning. The attack was launched on the morning of 31 May. German-Italian units fought their way forward yard by yard against the toughest British resistance imaginable. Nevertheless, by the time evening came we had penetrated a substantial distance into the British positions. On the following day the defenders were to receive their quietus. After heavy Stuka attacks, the infantry again surged forward against the British field positions. Piece by piece the elaborate British defences were won until by early afternoon the whole position was ours. The last British resistance was quenched. We took in all 3,000 prisoners and destroyed or captured 101 tanks and armoured cars, as well as 124 guns of all kinds. Acting on mistaken reports about German tank losses, Ochenlech strongly urged Ritchie to counterattack along the coast, to exploit the absence of German tanks and break through to Timimi and then Mahili. Ritchie was more concerned by Tobruk, brought reinforcements up to the El Adem box and created new defensive boxes opposite the gaps in the minefield. Ritchie ordered the 8th Army to counterattack against the Africa Corps on 5 June but they were met by accurate fire from tank and anti-tank guns positioned in the cauldron. In the north, 13th Corps made no progress but the attack by 7th Armoured and 5th Indian Divisions on the eastern flank of the cauldron at 2.50, initially went well. 
An important element of the plan was the destruction of the Axis anti-tank screen with an artillery bombardment but because of an error in plotting its position, the bombardment fell too far to the east. When the 22nd Armored Brigade advanced, it was met by massed anti-tank fire and the advance was checked. The 32nd Army Tank Brigade advancing from the north, joined the attack at dawn but also ran into massed fire, losing 50 of 70 tanks. By early afternoon on 5 June, Rommel split his forces, deciding to attack east with the Ariat and 21st Panzer Divisions while he sent elements of 15th Panzer Division northwards against the Knightsbridge box. The eastward thrust towards Bir el Hatmate dispersed the tactical HQs of the two British divisions, as well as the HQs of the 9th Indian Infantry Brigade, the 10th Indian Infantry Brigade and other smaller units, which caused command to break down. The 22nd Armoured Brigade, having lost 60 of its 156 tanks, was forced from the battlefield by more attacks from the 15th Panzer Division. Three Indian infantry battalions, a reconnaissance regiment and four artillery regiments of the attacking force were left behind, unsupported by armour and overrun. Rommel retained the initiative, maintaining his strength in the cauldron while the number of operational British tanks diminished. A number of probes were sent to test the various opposing strong points and from 6 to 8 June, further attacks were launched on Bir Hakim and repulsed by the French garrison. The 7th Motor Brigade and 29th Indian Infantry Brigade continued to harass the Axis lines of communications. <laughs> Black Saturday 13 June On the 11th of June, Rommel pushed the 15th Panzer Division and 90th Light Africa Division toward El Adem and by 12 June had begun forcing the 201st Guards Brigade out of the Knightsbridge box to Tobruk. The 29th Indian Infantry Brigade repulsed an attack on the El Adem box on 12 June but the 2nd and 4th Armoured Brigades on their left were pushed back 6 kilometres by the 15th Panzer Division and had to leave their damaged tanks on the battlefield. On 13 June, the 21st Panzer Division advanced from the west and engaged the 22nd Armoured Brigade. The Africa Corps demonstrated a superiority in tactics, combining tanks with anti tank guns in the attack. Rommel acted rapidly on intelligence obtained from Allied radio traffic intercepts. By the end of the day, the British tank strength had been reduced from 300 tanks to about 70 and the Africa Corps had established armour superiority and a dominating line of positions, making 13th Corps on the Ghazala line vulnerable to being cut off. By the end of 13 June, the Knightsbridge box was virtually surrounded and it was abandoned by the Guards Brigade later that night. Due to these defeats, 13 the June became known as Black Saturday to the 8th Army. Topic. Rigel Ridge On 13 June, the 21st Panzer Division attacked Rigel Ridge in the middle of a sandstorm. The Germans overran part of the 2nd Scots Guards at the Knightsbridge Box at the west end of Rigel Ridge, overlooked by the 6th South African Anti-Tank Battery of the 2nd Field Regiment, Natal Field Artillery and a battery of the 11th Regiment RA nearby. The South African gunners kept firing until their guns were destroyed, allowing the withdrawal of other Allied formations. The South African battery commander had decided to stay and maintain fire against the German tanks, to delay the Germans for as long as possible. The remaining guns were commanded individually and fired at the panzers over open sights. The German tanks took up positions behind the ridge, with anti-tank guns placed between them. A column of panzers attacked from the rear, surrounding them and cutting off all escape and the gunners kept firing until the eight guns had been destroyed. About half the gun detachments were killed and wounded, including the battery commander and many officers. The last gun in action was manned by Lieutenant Ashley and a signaller. When the battery had been silenced, the enemy tanks approached cautiously and the South African gunners were taken prisoner. The entire Natal Field Artillery Regiment was captured and was not reformed until after the war. The Germans captured over 3,000 Allied prisoners. Topic: Eighth Army Retreat. On the 14th of June, Ochinlek authorized Ritchie to withdraw from the Gazala line. The defenders in the El Adem and two neighbouring boxes held firm and the 1st South African Division was able to withdraw along the coast road, practically intact. 
The road could not accommodate two divisions and the remaining two brigades of the 50th Northumbrian Division could not retreat eastwards because of the presence of the Axis armour so attacked southwest, breaking through the lines of the Brescia and Pavia divisions of 10th Italian Corps and headed south into the desert, before turning east to retreat. It was clear to Ochinlek, that London would not contemplate a withdrawal to the better defensive positions around the Egypt-Libya frontier. On 14 June, Ochinlek ordered to Ritchie to hold a line running southeast from Akroma west of Tobruk through El Adem to Bir El Gubi. By the evening of 15 June, the strong point at point 650 had been overrun and on 16 June, the defenders at point 187 had been forced by lack of supplies to evacuate. Throughout the day, the defensive boxes at El Adem and Sidi Rez were also attacked by the Africa Corps. On 17 June, both were evacuated and any chance of preventing the encirclement of Tobruk vanished. Ritchie ordered the 8th Army to withdraw to the defensive positions at Mursa Matru, some 100 miles 160 km east of the frontier, leaving Tobruk to hold out and threaten the Axis lines of communication, in much the same way as in 1941. Fall of Tobruk Gott, the 13th Corps commander, appointed Major General Hendrik Klopper of the 2nd South African Division commander of the Tobruk garrison. In addition to the two South African brigades, he had the 201st Guards motorized Brigade, 11th Indian Infantry Brigade, 32nd Army Tank Brigade and the 4th Anti-Aircraft Brigade. Tobruk had withstood a siege of nine months, before being relieved by Operation Crusader in December 1941. Allied leaders expected it to be able to hold out for two months with the supplies in the fortress. Claude Ochinlek viewed the defense of Tobruk as a secondary matter and told Neil Ritchie that he did not intend to hold it at all costs. In February 1942 the Army, Navy and Air Force commanders-in-chief in Cairo had agreed that Tobruk should not stand another siege. Given this and the subsequent emphasis on reinforcing the Ghazala position for Operation Buckshot, which was forestalled by Operation Ida, the defences at Tobruk had not been maintained in first-rate condition. On 21 June, in circumstances that even with the benefit of a court of enquiry remain obscure and contradictory, 35,000 Allied troops including the South African 2nd Division surrendered to General Enya Navarini. Aftermath. Topic. Analysis With the capture of Tobruk, the Axis gained a port nearer the Aegean Crete route and a large amount of British supplies. If the British could not stop the Germans in Egypt, they would take the Suez Canal forcing Britain to use supply lines twice as long, often targeted by U-boats and potentially drive for the oilfields in the Middle East. Hitler rewarded Rommel with a promotion to the rank of Field Marshal, the youngest German officer ever to achieve this rank. Rommel remarked he would have preferred Hitler had given him another panzer division instead, Churchill wrote, This was one of the heaviest blows I can recall during the war. Not only were its military effects grievous, but it had affected the reputation of the British armies. Ochinlek dismissed Ritchie on 25 June and assumed command of the Eighth Army through the First Battle of El Alamein, where he stopped Rommel's advance. In August, Ochinlek was replaced as 8th Army Commander by the 13th Corps Commander, Lt. Gen. William Gott and as C in C Middle East Command by Gen. Sir Harold Alexander. Gott was killed when his aircraft was shot down and Lt. Gen. Bernard Montgomery was appointed as his replacement. In 2017, James Holland wrote, As Rommel said to a captured British officer, what difference does it make if you have two tanks to my one, when you spread them out and let me smash them in detail? That one sentence really did encapsulate the nub of the matter and the failure of the Ox approach. Frankly, he and his senior commanders should have known better by now. Casualties <coughs> 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 The 8th Army lost 50,000 men killed, wounded or captured, including c. 35,000 prisoners taken at Tobruk Axis casualties were 3,360 Germans and a smaller number of Italian losses. On 30 June, the Africa Corps reported that Axis tank losses were c. 400 and that only 44 to 55 German tanks were operational. The Italian 20th Corps was down to 15 tanks and the 90th Light Africa Division had only 1,679 men left. 
The Eighth Army lost thousands of tons of supplies, nearly 800,000 rounds of artillery ammunition, nearly 13 million rounds of small arms ammunition and a huge number of tanks. Hundreds of damaged tanks had been left behind when armored regiments retreated and it was estimated that 1,188 tanks had been lost in 17 days. On the 22nd of June, the Desert Air Force had 463 operational aircraft, 420 of them in the Middle East, the Germans 183 and the Italians 238, with another 174 in reserve and 500 in the Mediterranean excluding Italy. The Royal Army Ordnance Corps recovered 581 tanks up to 19 June, repaired 278 and sent 222 back to Egypt 326 being US-made tanks. The British were reduced to about 185 operational tanks by the end of the battle and shuffling operational tanks and crews between units disrupted unit organization. Seven field artillery regiments, 6,000 lorries and two tank repair workshops which had been moved into Tobruk were lost. By 1 July, the 8th Army was back at El Alamein, with 137 serviceable tanks, 42 en route from workshops and 902 tanks waiting to be repaired. Topic. Subsequent operations Panzer Army Africa began Unternehmen Ida, Operation Ida an advance upon Egypt, while the 8th Army fell back to El Alamein. Ochinlek decided not to hold Mursa Matru, choosing to fight a delaying action with 10th and 13th Corps. The Africa Corps was delayed at the Battle of Mursa Matru but signal failures led to disorganization and the 10th Corps line of retreat along the coast road being cut off. The Corps broke out at night to the south and worked its way around the German positions, collided with Axis forces several times and lost more than 6,000 prisoners, 40 tanks and a large quantity of supplies. Ochinlek had ordered the bulk of the 8th Army to retire another 160 kilometers 99 miles to El Alamein, 100 kilometers 62 miles from Alexandria. The retirements brought the 8th Army closer to its base and the Katara Depression to the south of El Alamein closed the southern flank. The Allied and Axis forces fought the First Battle of El Alamein, the Battle of Alam El Halfa and the Second Battle of El Alamein, Operation Agreement, a British landing at Tobruk during the night of 13-14 September, to rescue Allied prisoners, was a failure. Topic. Orders of battle Topic. See also Battle of Bir Hakim North African Campaign Timeline List of World War II Battles Footnotes Citations Bibliography Further reading Topic. External links German experiences during the Battle of Gazala Fact file, Battle of Gazala WW2 People's War. BBC Battle of Gazala Parliamentary Debates, House of Commons Official Report 2 July 1942 Battle of Gazala Animated Battle Map Mark Cannon